Welcome back to MVM. Today we're here with some more first impressions of another convention game that's coming out this convention season, and that is Corrosion from Capstone Games. Now, this is a kind of first impressions video, like I said. I've played this game uh, three times now. I've only just, played it once, just one time. Just one time. So you are, I mean, you're getting real first, first impressions. impressions. Of course, I'm Ryan, and if you haven't been watching our chit chats. This is Emily. She's been uh, jumping into film content with us. It's yeah. Been a lot of fun. Yeah. I think this is your first first impressions video. It right? is my first first impressions. So we <laughs> thought Corrosion would be a good one for a couple reasons. Number one, a lot of people are really excited about it. This is Capstone's new game. They always release big hits every year, uh, and they'll be available uh, in the fall, like in retail as well. And also, we just kind of really enjoyed the game. I and, loved and this game, honestly. You, you loved the game, right? I did. I really did. Yeah. I'm excited <laughs> to talk about it. Let's get first to it. First impression spoiled. <laughs> we know now. No, we, we'll talk about it. But first, just a little, like, I don't even know where to start with this game. Because there's, so, it's, it's, there's so much happening, and it's such a unique idea. But the theme is kind of based on this idea of corrosion. Mm -hmm. You're gathering these materials over the course of the game. You're gathering like these machines. You're gathering gears. And all of them will corrode. As your player board kind of like rotates, you have this dial in the center. And as you're playing your character cards out to this factory, they're going to have to remain out here for a number of rotations. Your factories will only last for a certain number of rotations. Yep. I mean, it's a super weird like combination of timing issues. Everything corrodes too. Not just like your gears, your factories, yeah. but even your workers when you get them back and when you can play them again. So everything is a really tight economy. But the cool part is that you're controlling it, right? So I control when my factory turns on the time. Ryan controls his. Any other player controls theirs. So it's not like you're racing against yeah, the clock. that's true. You're racing against yourself and like however you want to move your own factory and how it's going to corrode. Yeah, I think I'd like the game way worse if it was like a race against time. Because Definitely. <laughs> when you see the theme and you hear corrosion, you kind of think, okay, well, the, the gear is constantly spinning. Mm -hmm. If I don't use these resources ASAP, they're going to be gone. But that's not the case. Because like Emily said, you control when it spins and you can get all of these different types of machines. You can get these machines that slot into your player board that trigger every time you rotate your gear. They can trigger every time the arrow points to them. And you have a whole player board where you can like place uh, machines that last forever that kind of build engines. And I think Definitely. for me, that's the part of the game that I really like. It's yeah. Like, the wheel's cool, but coming down to this player board and getting those those chrome machines that have special abilities. Because these are like every time you turn your gear, every time you play a specific card, every time you build another factory. And you can combo these things together in a really satisfying way. Definitely. But the cool part for me too on that was you get a good combo going and you're like, all right, this is going to be my strategy. It's a great engine builder. But then to get more chromes on here, you're limiting the number of spots. So if you want to yeah. add something more because there are a lot of points, you got to start changing your engine then too. So I, when I played, I had a great engine going where it was like every time I played this card, this would happen. But then I also had one where I needed to get new chromes. So my engine was constantly changing what it was. And I had to keep changing with it how I was playing the game, which I thought was just super neat. It's not like, you know, you're building something up and then you have to keep going with it. You're... You're building something that continuously changes and it's always new. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it because as you're building out your little player zone and you're putting all these machines in your board, you can have some really satisfying turns, literal turns, yes. <laughs> where you're turning the gear and you're triggering all of these different machines and you're getting all these different resources which you can then spend. Mm -hmm. But then you realize like after a turn or two, those machines start to corrode away yep. and now your engine is not what it was. Now you're struggling to get resources. So you kind of have to continuously invest in the machine yes. in order to run those chrome engines down here. Yes. And since you know you can only have three active chrome engines, mm -hmm. that's not like that's not a lot because those are worth points at the end of the game. So you need to build more chrome engines. Yes. Which means you're stacking chrome engines on top of other chrome engines, and you're only getting the power of the topmost one. Mm -hmm. So you might accidentally bury a really important piece of your engine. That, yeah, that definitely. happened to me. I mean, I was like, I I found myself really wanting the ability after I covered it. Yeah, yeah, and I think what's hard too, like what you talked about is that there are times in the game where you have like a lot going on in your factory. You're like, okay, I have tons of gears, I'm getting tons of resources, what do I wanna do with these resources yeah. now? And then you start investing in them and then once you've invested in them, you're like, great, now I have a great engine going, all of a sudden your resources are out. And you're like, wait, I gotta go yeah, look at my factory again. Th that's definitely a thing. That happened to me several times. And that's, that's part of it because you're always trying to spend these resources and it's efficiency game. Yes, You definitely. don't wanna, you want to spend all your resources before they corrode. If you are rotating this gear and there's a big X that shows where everything corrodes at, mm -hmm. 
if you get there and you still have like five or six resources, now the game is kind of kind. Those resources don't expire till the end of your turn. Right. So you do at least have like one last chance to spend them, mm -hmm. but you don't want to let them corrode. I mean, that's that's inefficient. Um, but something we haven't talked about too that's really cool about this is that it's not just what you're doing on your turn, but it has the follow mechanic, right? Yeah, and that's the whole the whole aspect of card play. Mm -hmm. So so on so on other people's turns, if they choose a lower number, you can follow as long as you have the same color and a higher number, and you can basically give up that action to follow what they're doing, uh, which is really cool because if you kind of work that into your strategy, you're ending up taking a bunch of turns, even though it's not your turn, and yeah. you're getting a whole lot of stuff done. You just have to be able to give up kind of your autonomy in that and like doing what exactly what you wanted. That's the key. That's the thing about that strategy. Because the game, all the cards drive your actions. Every card you play gives an action. And in your starting hand, you only have cards from one to three. Mm -hmm. And if you want to follow another player's action, you have to have a card that's higher. So you need to really invest in getting some more threes and fours. But every turn you take to get new cards is a turn that you're not getting engines for your, or yep. machines for your engine. So you have to decide. I mean, you can buy cards every single turn. And then never build your engine, you're probably going to lose. Like, right, You definitely. have to walk that fine line. But it is neat, that, that decision of like, okay, I have a three in my hand that does something really good. And you put a two that does something okay, mm -hmm. but I'm not, but yeah, I'm not getting, I'm not wasting a turn to do it. That's a really tough choice. It is. I found myself at times I was like, okay, this is what I'm going to do on my turn, just waiting for my turn. And then someone plays something and I'd be like, oh, do I do that though? And I change my turn? It's like, do I want to? Well, and I've, I've planned out my turn. Yeah. Followed someone and then got back to me and gone to play the card and realized, oh my gosh, I should not have followed. Yeah. Like I yeah. needed that card for that actual card's ability. I can see where that would be frustrating for some people because mm -hmm. the game, this game does require a lot of planning. Definitely. Which I definitely. think for me is a pro. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you'd agree. I, I love it. And like you said, it's an efficiency game, right? So everything you're doing has a cost and a benefit and you're doing a lot of this in your head while you're going and thinking, you know, I have a lot of options, but also very limited resources. So, very limited. Like, like you and, said, and I that love only that. Lasts for a little bit. Yeah, and it it never feels like you're really like making a huge mistake or anything because there you can still catch up, right? There's nothing yeah. where you're like blowing people out of the water. Um, even when when we played, we saw that a couple folks had like a lot of in game points. Right. Um, but you can still catch up in end game scoring still. And it's not obvious like someone's really well, running away I, mean, I, I think that's the thing, too, when you compare this game to other engine builders. It still has that problem that I think all engine builders have, hmm. where you're either having a really effective engine or you're sure. fighting to build your engine. And the player that's just fighting and fighting to try to make something work is going to have a little bit more frustrating experience than the person that is like, oh, that card, oh, I can just take that one right now. Yeah. Oh, that's exactly what I needed. But in this game, no engine lasts forever. So you get some games where people will, like, you know, Wingspan is a great example of an engine builder where once somebody gets an engine going, they're just going to keep doing that engine for That's the rest true. of the game. You can't do that here because your machines are going to corrode out, your tiles are, like, they're going to go away, and your yeah. characters are going to sit on the board. So you can't just play the same character card to get the same action. Right, you're not either. spamming the same thing all the time. You, it really is forcing you to continuously evolve your strategy and keep thinking on your feet of, like, here you are now, here's where the other players are now, now what do you want to do about the new situation? So I gather your first impression is positive. I loved it, what honestly. Is, what is the, your favorite thing about it, first my, impression wise? My favorite thing about it was that, A, I got a good engine going, so I felt it felt really rewarding right. where I was like, ooh, now I have my rhythm, I know what to do. But like I said, when I, when I covered it, I had to come up with a new rhythm, a new engine. And I really like the aspect of uh, the board and controlling when you're moving it. When, honestly, when you first told me, like, there's a time element to it mm -hmm. and things corrode, I was like, oh, no. I, I feel like I'm going to be, like, fighting with people for resources right. and have to plan ahead. But because I could do it and it was just me, like, looking at the board and the factory and what happened there, I felt much more in control of it. And so, like, sometimes my factory was moving way faster than everybody else's and I was turning basically every turn because yeah. I just would follow, 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 turn, follow, 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 turn. Um, well, that's definitely a strategy. It is. And I think that's kind of what I, my favorite thing about it is that exact thing is that you can play this game where you have, where you just play a ton of cards, you gather a ton of engines mm -hmm. so that when you turn, you're just triggering all of this stuff. Like yeah. you're triggering like six of the little turning machines, you're triggering some of your uh, one-time use machines. All these things are triggering every time you turn your board and that's satisfying to just gather all this stuff. Or... You can play a really like tight game where you're literally just turning all the time. Yeah. And you're only getting small incremental rewards with every turn, but you're turning more often. Mm -hmm. So you're getting things more often. And I think that allows you to kind of pivot too, because right. you're not spending a lot of time building up something. 
you could build up an engine that gives you, for example, like a ton of small gears. Yeah. Because they're different size gears. And then you might have no cards that need small gears. And you're like, well, I wish I had invested some in medium yeah. gears too. So I think that's that's fun for me. That, that, that puzzle of like, not what am I producing now, but what am I going to want to produce in two to three turns? Yeah. And I mean, you will have unsatisfying actions, right? Times where you get to your turn and there's not a lot you can do. But there weren't many of those for me. And really, it always felt like... I usually felt like I had a lot of different options that were good that I wanted to take, right? So I was like, ooh, I could get that gear. But also, I could get another chrome. But also, will I then have enough resources? So it always felt like a fun puzzle. You know, it was never like a just super punishing, challenging puzzle where I was like, well, I haven't done anything in five turns. Right. Yeah, so yeah, you're not just sitting there watching. Um, And the fact that you can follow other people means there's a little bit less downtime. Mm Mm-hmm. But I want to hear also just your cons, your negatives about this game. Because, I mean, there's no such thing as a perfect game. This game definitely yeah. has some cons. And I just want to know what you think about that. So, just because we were just talking about the follow action, and I do love it. I do also think it was kind of confusing. We weren't sure. great about using the first, the current player wrench. Um, but it if you didn't use it, it became very confusing of, like, whose turn was it? Who's following? Who are we waiting on to see if they're going to follow? That's the part. Because you'll get, you'll yeah. be like, okay, I'm done. And then goes the next person. So it's like, wait, well, why, wait, what did you play? Yeah. Like, I might be following and I'm like, wait a minute. Who actually played the first card? Right. And it's like, you play a two mm-hmm. and then they play a three. And then I'm like, oh, okay, he played a three. I have to follow a three. No, I play you have to follow, have to follow the two. two. Mm-hmm. It, you, it, it reminds me a lot of like playing Concordia Venus where you have the two sure. players taking actions. You need to be really, really careful to pay attention to whose turn it is. Whose turn it is, yeah. And I think, too, at the beginning, it's not as bad because you're kind of taking smaller actions. You're building up some engines. But at the end stages, too, when you've got engines going and someone's follow action is long enough that you're like, this had to be your action, right? right? And they're like, oh, no, it was just a follow. You're like, so then who did the original action? Right, because all all of your Chrome engines can trigger on follow actions, like ones that want you to gather certain resources and things like that. So. My my con my biggest con for this game is the game length. Yeah. And that's because the game is tied to, to player controlled in game conditions. There's a pile of victory points that will go out over the course of the game based on how fast you're turning your wheel and how fast you're buying these because there's gonna be some victory points added on to the engines that mm-hmm. aren't bought. But if people aren't pushing their engine, they're not gear- grabbing these, like that pile that takes forever to dwindle. And then you have these in game scoring tiles, which I think are really neat. They give you scoring in a lot of different ways. Yeah. And this can be the in-game tr- trigger as well, but players might not go for these. Right. They're hard to get because the only way to get these is through one special type of one-shot machine mm-hmm. that could be buried. Whenever they pop up, everybody fights over them. Yep. And so you might not get them, or if people, like, pass on them, then you're just left with people that, like, can't complete these. You can have those in-game tiles out on your board, but those, you're not those completing machines them. And, not, and not actually rotating your gear, so they're just like stuck in limbo. It can just, the game can be three hours with a group of players that yeah. haven't played it before. And I, I really like what the game does. I don't think that the game needs to be doing it for three hours. I yeah. think that this is a great, like, 90 minute game. And if everyone's played before, if people are going for points, if they mm-hmm. are pushing that in game, the game is not going to last that long. Sure. But this is like with any player controlled. I mean, you could literally have people just not even contributing to mm-hmm. the in game. And it can be kind of fun to just trigger all your fun stuff. Well, I think too for to points, for least. first time players, it's hard to tell even while you're playing it what actions would be contributing to the end. Like like you said, you can play these player controlled games, and sometimes people just don't care and they just like keep <laughs> right. dragging it out. But other times, I didn't feel like that with this one. I felt more like it was hard to tell how I would maximize it so that it would end more quickly. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it wasn't obvious. Like okay, if I did this, this, and this, it'll end in three turns. It was more like. We're, we've been playing for an hour. Where, <laughs> right, where like, are we at? Well, and there are some games where you can visibly see, and if you start to get ahead of everyone, yeah. then you're like, oh, I'm, I'm I'm in a sweet position. If the game ends now, I win. Mm-hmm. But this you can't. Like, There's no way that one player is going to be able to push for that right, in-game. Because exactly. if you did, you'd be buying so many in-game tiles, you'd just be winning no, anyway. It would just even... be impossible. It would, right. Yeah, you would definitely have a landslide <laughs> victory if you were controlling it. <laughs> you need players to do those kinds of things. But that being said, I think that for the, the core audience for this game, I don't see that being a huge problem. Like, yeah. Playing a three-hour Euro game doesn't phase a lot of people. Well, I I was thinking, too, in one of the other videos, Jeremy said, it's a brain burner. And I was like, that's it. That's how I would describe this game. It is a brain burner. I know that Jeremy gets mad at me for saying a game is thinky, but he calls them brain burners. I mean, it's the same (laughs) thing. This is a thinky, brain-burning game because that puzzle is just staring at you, and you're always trying to figure out 
how to get your cards back, when to get your cards back, what combos to trigger mm -hmm. to get points. I mean, it's it's neat. It does a lot of neat things. I could feel comfortable recommending it to people that like heavier Euro games. Uh, if you're familiar with Capstone, you know that this is like in Capstone's wheelhouse. They sure. do heavier games. This isn't, I don't think, super heavy compared to like a yeah. Fister game. Uh, I think Maracaibo they had, was a Capstone game last year. Yeah. I don't think it's heavier than those games, but I think I that the fact so that there's not like a a theme that grabs you either like this is not a super yeah. thematic game it, it is all about the mechanics i think that just can make for that disconnect and just make the game take a little longer so yeah. that's uh that's corrosion thank you for joining me and talking about it yeah i loved it i would definitely recommend this one uh, it was a puzzle but a very fun puzzle that's i would good. do it again so that that's the test for you is would you play a game right away after you played it right? yeah There's a few, only a few games that qualify for that <laughs> So thank you so much. You'll be able to find Corrosion out later this year. I don't know which conventions this is actually going to make an appearance on this fall. Things are kind of crazy right now with shipping and production. And hopefully this will reach our retail shelves by the end of the year. So look for Corrosion coming soon. And uh, let us know in the comments below what you think about the game. If you've had a chance to play it somewhere, play it online. I'd love to know uh, if my opinions are just <laughs> way off base. <laughs> But anyway, thank you all, and thank you, Emily, for joining us today. Of course. And until we see you next time, have fun at the table. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.